What's going on my trainer club? I wanted to bring this to you because community day is coming up. We have a lot of events that are gonna be coming up over the holiday season. So I'm gonna help you with the new updated skip animation catch trick to catch more Pokemon and Pokemon Go with the best strategy that I learned in Japan. So welcome to the trainer club, here we go. Welcome back everybody. Let me know in the comments below, do you use the skip animation catch trick which helps you catch Pokemon faster? Do you not? Have you tried? What is your questions about this? Let me know in the comments below or let me know your wins below because this trick is the best thing that's out there. I'm sure that most of you guys are doing this by now. So when I was over in Japan during the GoFest time, I fortunately got to play with some of the big boss Pokemon players in the Kinshisho Station, which is basically like the number one place to play in the world. All of the Pokemon players that have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of catches, I think that the Pokemon number one catch player in the world is approaching a million catches right now, right? Which is absolutely insane. I think I'm at almost 140,000. So he is just about 10 times where I am at right now, which is absolutely bonkers. So what I did learn from them is the new updated quick catch trick and I did touch on it before which was basically calling your ball back. In my other tutorial I mentioned that you could call your ball back. However, I did not make it as a mandated part of the quick catch trick which is going to be inserted in this video to help you guys out. Oh yeah, you guys are totally good. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a vlog type play. We're gonna play together and I'm gonna help you guys learn this quick catch trick. It's just a slight variation that I think really helps out. Number one, because I always think you should have the ability to call your ball back as opposed to a potential chance to do it. So we're gonna start reprogramming the way that we do this skip animation catch trick to make sure that when you are doing it, you are able to call your ball back anytime you want to make sure you can catch more Pokemon and to never waste your balls because when we're out there on community days and other really high intense catching days, the last thing we want to do is have our balls being wasted when we need to catch more shinies, more bagons, more beldums, more whatever community days have been or are coming up in the future because December we may have those guys come back. So we're gonna check it out right now. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's just go over briefly the old quick catch trick. So what we would do is we would basically find a Pokemon and we would take this Pokemon, let's say the Squablu right here that I have, we would pull the ball tray over or the berry tray, it doesn't matter which one you use, but what matters is we're gonna be able to glitch the run button up into the top corner. So I'm gonna pull this over, I'm gonna throw this at the Squablu, I'm gonna hit the Swablu, let go, click out, and then the run button's up in the corner, and then I run, right? And that Swablu is now going to be sitting in my bag right there, right? So now I have the Swablu. I'm gonna do this with you guys so you can see my hands as well. What I did right there is I didn't even give the berry tray a chance to sit there to be able to call the ball back. So the new way I suggest you guys do it, instead of automatically clicking out and then clicking run, which is a possibility, in a high dense spawn area or something like a community day where you wanna keep going, you can do that. But here's the better way that I've seen and learned from a lot of the guys in Japan. What they do initially is they push on the ball to see what color the circle is. When you see what color the circle is, it's gonna denote which type of ball is probably the best ball to use. If it's a red circle, probably gonna go with an ultra ball. If it's going to be a yellow circle, you probably want to use a great ball. So when I push on this Rhyhorn, I'm seeing a yellow circle. So immediately I could switch to a great ball. And then obviously if it's a green circle, you can use a Pokeball. So here we go, this is gonna be the updated one. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw at this Pokemon. I'm gonna leave the ball tray open until I see the Pokeball make contact, and then I'm going to run. There's two reasons why we're gonna do this. Number one, let's say that the Rhyhorn happens to do an attack in the middle of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna touch the ball again, it's going to stop the ball and then I'm gonna get it. And then number two, it's gonna give you complete control of what you do with your Pokeball, right? So for example, let's say I'm going to do a task where it's like three great throws in a row. If I go ahead and throw it at one of these Rhyhorns that's really far back, I notice that the ball is kind of off center. I can immediately touch a Pokeball and call that ball back and it won't count, right? So that helps out a lot. It helps you out with not wasting any balls and helps out with everything like that. So here we go, we have this Rhyhorn right here. Hopefully this Rhyhorn is gonna attack as I throw this ball. That one he didn't, he was about to, so I go ahead and run right there. So it gives me the option to run, right? I'm hoping that at one of these that we throw at, it will have that, so boom, right there. I called the ball back and I still have two great balls right there. You saw that, right? That's literally the key right there, that is amazing. So we're gonna do this again. 
he's attacking, I'll throw it at him, and I'll click the great ball again, and then I get that ball back. Nothing happens, that throw never even happened. So number one, I didn't miss out on the initial first ball catch XP bonus, and if it were to be in a streak, I didn't disrupt the streak because that throw literally never happened. So if you ever throw a ball, and the Pokemon starts to do an attack, it bounces off the head, and then you can get it. Unfortunately, we can't do this for the Legendary because it doesn't have a ball tray to call the actual ball back. We can quick catch with the Legendaries, which is in my other tutorial if you wanna check that out up here, but this is gonna be for everything but Legendaries. So now we're gonna go up close so you guys can see my hands work, you can see the screens, what we do as always, so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm calling the ball back how it looks for your fingers, and if you're going to throw with your left hand, you can always use the berry tray. Here we go guys, up close, in personal, so you guys can check this out. So first thing we do is pull over with our left thumb if we're throwing with our right finger. The ball tray is going to be there. We keep contact with that left thumb. We're gonna go ahead and throw the ball. Notice how the finger is still in contact with the screen because it's holding the berry tray. Once we go ahead and hit, we are going to lift that thumb up and then it's gonna open the berry tray. We click out right here onto the screen and then we are going to then, once we feel comfortable, we're gonna go ahead and click up in the top corner. I mean, you can do it quick or you can wait for the shakes, but usually I do it quick for the most part. So you click there and then you run and most of the time the Pokemon's gonna be the bag. It's definitely not a 100% catch rate, but here we go fast motion so you can see this let go and then we are going to click in that top left corner. So now we're gonna start breaking it down a little bit better so you guys can see and understand why I have changed this and why I recommend doing it this way instead. It's definitely gonna take a little bit of time. So you notice that Meowth attacked in the middle of that ball, right? And usually we're like, okay, well, we'll just waste that Pokeball. Well, right now, which we're doing right here, so we pulled that finger over. Same thing as always, we're gonna go ahead and shake and we're gonna throw and let go, boom, but we leave the tray there and as that ball is bouncing off the Meowth's head, we're gonna go ahead and pick that up, right? So we're gonna go ahead and pause this here. So the first thing, putting our thumb in that bottom right corner before we're gonna go ahead and pull the tray over. So this is the first step. With the thumb on the screen and the contact, right, you see how the ball is enlarged in the right corner? That is basically meaning we are gonna glitch the screen so that when we go ahead and lift that up, we are going to have the berry tray. So we're gonna go ahead and pick this Pokeball up. We're gonna go ahead and release it. The Meowth's in the middle of the attack. I go ahead and let my thumb up and instead of clicking out of the screen immediately, notice I leave the ball tray up, which gives me the option. So this is the advantage right here. Two, go ahead and click on the great ball right here, which as the ball is bouncing off the Meowth's head, you can go ahead and click on the great ball and it's going to call the ball back, meaning that you basically didn't even throw it. It never even happened. So we're gonna go ahead and check that. So let's check out this Mareep in fast motion. So what I meant by clicking on the ball is basically like, look at this right here. You see the Mareep in the circle, it's a green circle. So there's no reason for us to go for a great ball or an ultra ball because the circle is gonna be green. So if we do this on the Trico right here, I go ahead and pull the ball tray over, I throw it, I bounce and hit and throw. So the only difference is the delay, but if you're used to doing it really fast, it's gonna be a little bit hard to get used to. So I saw that, I saw what the circle is. I know it's a starter, I could use a better ball, but I didn't and I went ahead and threw it. And a lot of you guys are gonna be like, this looks exactly the same, I don't know what's different. Just notice the ball tray, how the ball tray stays open, and that's really gonna be the difference maker. And as soon as I feel comfortable, I click out. It gives me complete control, it literally changes it, but it's very difficult to get it down when you're used to the old way, right? It's just a little bit more difficult than before. So we're gonna go ahead and throw out that Meowth. Boom, click out, and then done. And look, the Meowth is gone because it's now sitting in our bag or it ran away. Either one of those scenarios is going to be okay. So now we're gonna do it with the left-handed throwing with the berry tray. So the berry tray is gonna act just as the ball tray does, and you're gonna check it out right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull that berry tray over. Keeping our finger contact on the screen, the berry tray is now enlarged. You see that in the corner, that means that we're doing it properly. So go ahead and right here, we're gonna throw that bag on. And I didn't like my throw, so I let go, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click the berry which is the same thing as clicking the ball, but this is gonna be for the players throwing with their left finger. And notice we have 227 balls again. So we're gonna go ahead and break this down in slow motion for you guys and pause it. So notice, starting off we have 227 balls, right? Before we even do this. And now we're gonna go ahead and then put our finger 
on the berry tray or a thumb or whichever one's comfortable for you. You don't have to do exactly as I'm doing because remember I am throwing with my right hand throwing left. So this is probably not what you're gonna do. And notice how the berry tray is enlarged because of the berry button, that means your finger is doing the right contact. Once the bag on starts attacking, we're gonna go ahead and pick the ball up. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it. I didn't like my throw, I let go, right? And the berries pop back up. Once the berries pop back up, and I know that I didn't like my throw, obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and click one of the berries, which is then going to pull that ball back because now it's making an action with the balls of the berries, and that's how we do it here. And notice, boom, we have 227 balls still in our bag right there because we technically didn't throw it, nothing happened. It is the exact same. So let's go ahead and watch this one more time in fast motion so you guys can see it happen. It happens pretty fast, you're gonna have to get used to it, but 227 balls still in the bag, and then here we go on that right throw. And I'm gonna go ahead and click run. Here we go on the raid bosses. This is one of my favorites because it usually takes a pretty good amount of time to catch raid bosses because they can eat up to 18 balls potentially. So here we go. You're gonna notice it's a little bit awkward just because of how I'm filming it right now. But usually I would take my left hand, pull the thumb over, pull it over. But this is the fast motion. So what you do is you basically throw it at it pull the berry tray over just as we do for the left-handed throwers. So left-handed throwers have a little bit of an advantage and then we run. So let's check this out in slow motion. So if you're right-handed, I use my left thumb and I pull it over. If you are left-handed, you can use your right thumb and pull it over. So left thumb is pulling it over for me right now. Then I go ahead and I put my right finger on the screen. It's just gonna be a little awkward just because of how you have to position it. But once the boss is ready to attack, right? This is how it's going to go. We're basically gonna hold this ball tray until the Pokemon's about to attack. You can also resize the ball as the Pokemon is still sitting here with your finger on the tray. It doesn't really matter. I still have my finger on the tray and it's still good to go. So he's going to start attacking. Once he starts attacking, I'm going to pick the ball up. I wanna do this nice and slow for you guys. The berry tray is gonna disappear right there. You saw that disappear. We are going to then toss the ball Threw it a little bit late there, but that's okay. Once it hits, I let go with my finger on the screen. Me letting go with my finger on the screen is going to pop out the berry tray. Once the berry tray is popped out, I then click off of the screen above the berry tray, which is gonna close the berry tray, boom. Once the berry tray is closed, the run button is frozen in the top left corner. So if this was the last ball, I would click run right now because it doesn't matter. But since it's not the last ball, I have 13 balls left. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to wait until it is caught, boom, once I see it's caught, then I click run and we are good to go. So then you can go ahead and check it out. This Pokemon, Cresselia, is going to be that 1612 sitting right in my bag right there. I hope this helps. I know that community days are coming up. It's gonna be super important for us not to waste any balls, especially the great balls and ultra balls. We run out of those so quick on the community days because we're throwing it at the shinies, at the good ones, at the high CP ones that we may lucky trade later. So maximizing on your balls is absolutely important. I really think that it's probably one of the best things that we can do. And delaying clicking out of that berry tray or the ball tray is probably the best thing that has happened to me because now I have complete control I can call the ball back at any time and once that happens it speeds up my interactions and what I learned at Kinshiso Station is that when you're grinding super hard like that you want to have maximum pokeball capacity in your bags because if you don't you're going to run out of pokeballs and that happens to me quite frequently at Kinshiso and especially if you're throwing at something like a Murkrow or something like that that is hard to catch or that attacks very frequently then it's going to waste your balls and hinder your ability to catch more Pokemon. So, hope that helps. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Do you already do this or are you going to start implementing? It does take a little bit of time to reprogram your brain because you're so used to pull it over, throw the ball, click out and run. Now it's pull it over, throw the ball, let go, leave it there, and then once you see the connection, then you click out and then you run. It's just that one extra step, but trust me, once you master it, you are going to have complete control over your entire gameplay. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. All my likers, commenters, and subscribers, and Patreon members for taking your subscriptions to the next level. It is freezing here, and I appreciate you guys being here with me as well. So I'm gonna see you out on the next video. Peace.
I just want to take a moment and sincerely thank all of my Patreon members, everybody that has taken their subscription to the next level and chosen to support me on this platform. I greatly appreciate you guys as a growing channel and really trying to grow and improve as much as I possibly can. I really appreciate the extra support. You guys mean the absolute world to me. I cannot wait to connect with you soon and I appreciate you guys all for being a part of the Trainer Club. I will see you guys out on the next video.